Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. And welcome to the Weird Science Comics channel here where I'm going to be going through the big, big, big event, starting with Empire Number 1 here. And it is one of those things that it was huge, 50-plus issues. It got whittled down to 30-plus issues. Still a lot of issues. Still a lot of money if you're going to go full in with this. A lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of everything. And so going into this, my main thing, the thing that I want to be a reviewing is, you know, if the issue is good. But also, is this number one issue something that's going to make me get all in and buy all those issues? Am I going to maybe just settle with, the main empire issues or am i just fully out we shall see by the end but yeah it is a story that is written by al ewing with a story by dan slot and al ewing and art by valerio shady and we did have some preludes we had a zero issue fantastic four a zero issue avengers and we had a road to Cree scroll war issue which actually was my favorite and actually was the one who that kind of got hulkling into the whole deal of being the head of this new Cree scroll army with this peace accord with the whole war being done. But I did not really enjoy the Fantastic Four or the Avengers Zero issues that much. They didn't have me that excited for this. And going into this, if you haven't read them, you don't have to. You're going to get recap. I This is something that everybody knows. It, it just every time it still <laughs> irritates me when I read something and then you get the recap that tells you everything that has happened. And one of the things going into this, it's an event. Everybody, you're going to have a ton of recap in this. Now, the recap, though, is something that is a necessary evil. It's the nature of the beast with this sort of thing, especially an event. But there are ways to do it where it's forced, and there's ways to do it not so forced. And I think at points, this gets a little forced. And Al Ewing's script, very wordy, very much a narration-heavy script, and you're going through multiple narrators as well. And I think that that kind of bogged me down a bit. But the whole deal of the you know recap and the forced nature of it comes into play right away. And it stinks because I love Franklin. I love Val. And we get another story where because Franklin is way too powerful, even if his powers are fading, still too powerful. So he has to be put off the deal and go off in his own book, in the Fantastic Four book during this. But in the main deal, you could have Franklin kind of wink and it's all done, right? You end up with this whole thing over, so you have to get rid of him. But just the idea where... You have Reed come to his son. Hey, you know, you've got to go back to Earth. You got to take the Kree and the Scroll kids that we saved from that casino. You got to take them to Earth. And Franklin yells, You know, my powers are fading. I've been waiting, holding back, because anytime I use them could be my last. And I want Reed to go, Who are you talking to? I know this. And again, it's recap, but do it in a more natural way. But also, don't keep reminding me uh, of you not being able to use Franklin for whatever. He has just pretty much spelled out in that little recap deal that he hasn't done crap since he came back. And now he's not going to be doing crap here yet. So we'll see how this all progresses. Please figure out what you're going to do with Franklin, please, because I like the character. But yeah, you end up with Val and... Franklin going back to Earth, taking the Kree and the Skrull kids that they ended up saving from the profiteer, the new elder that we had. And so you end up with the Fantastic Four popping into the Kree Skrull Amada. Yes, you saw that at the end of their zero issue. You even saw it at the end of the Avengers issue as well. And so what they are there to do is to figure out what's going on. I mean, you see, they've already learned that the Kree Scroll War was over. They're going to end up kind of doing an invisible flyby that becomes not so invisible as they see Hulkling in there as, you know, pretty much a badass type king there on his throne. Now, in the meantime, you end up the, the Fantastic Four go invisible. 
But then they're going to be found out. Super Scroll Zero says, well, since I can be invisible, I can see things that are invisible. Also, what I can do is since I can make things, I can make them clear again. He ends up just pretty much snapping his fingers so that they are visible to everyone. Uh, And then they are going to end up the Fantastic Four on the bridge talking with Hulkling, Super Scroll, talking with the Pursuer, all of these things going on because for the most part in this, our heroes think that maybe Hulkling has been duped. Maybe he's being controlled. Maybe he's being fed lies. They are trying to figure this out and even trying to you know, kind of say to Hulkling, you know, snap out of it, buddy. You're one of us. Come back to the fold. Let's see. Let's figure this out. Especially when the Fantastic Four go onto a ship to see what's going on in Super Scrolls there. There's going to be some questions. There's going to be some issues. Well, we go back to the moon then where you end up having the Avengers there. This was stuff that continues from that Avengers number zero lead in issue. All right, there with the Celestial Messiah. Koye, and he is there to try to protect the Katadi. The whole thing of this is the Kree and the Scroll joining up together. They are going to attack the Katadi, the Katadi moon area there, the blue area where they had this all set up. Looks like it's the target of the Kree and the Scroll. And again, What I said, and we did this on our Patreon, we had a Patreon review that was a lot longer if you're interested in that, but when we talked about it, me and Brandon, I said that one of my biggest problems with this first issue is every time something happens, it ends up being a little lesser than what I thought the story was about. Korean Scroll, they're going to invade Earth. Oh, no, no, they're just going to the moon to destroy the Katari. All right, that's not as big as I thought. You end up with a twist at the end that even shows that the Kree and the Scroll aren't necessarily even the enemies, which is a neat twist, but kind of lessens the whole thing in my mind. But that's up to you. But as we go, the Avengers are trying to figure out what's going on with the Armada. What's happening? Hey, we're going to protect the Kotati. It's not fair. The Kotati have always got the short end of the stick here. We're going to save them. We're going to do all this like we always would do. And here is, again, where you get this forced intro, this forced recap. There's ways to do it a little better where you just have, you know, Koi just come and pronounce that, hey, look at me. To others, I may be the prophesized one, the celestial messiah. But to the Avengers, I'm simply Koye, always. the cra- you know, And it's just, all right. It, it just always seems like everybody's coming in as like, you know, a wrestling match where all of a sudden you end up having the intro music come out and the wrestler comes out and starts yelling about himself. And it just threw me out a little. It's just kind of a nitpick of mine. But yeah, you end up going where you're going to go through a bunch of things. You end up having She-Hulk being able to go off, off panel get a weapon and come back and now she is the jennifer that we all really know and love not the savage she hulk but the she hulk that can kind of you know think and and be a little more calm the one that was kind of getting sexy with thor in the regular avengers run now the the issue is what happened with this whole deal because in this book just like in donny cates's thor book Suddenly, Thor has no eye patch, and he has both of his arms again. It's very odd, and I have yet to have anybody explain to me why this is and why that's happening. But, you know, with the whole Avengers team assembling there, they are going to go off and, you know, try to put a stop to this invading Kree scroll Amada while... The Fantastic Four on the bridge try to figure things out themselves. And again, I said they're trying to figure out if Hulkling is on the up and up. Hey, come on. You know, you're one of us. Like I said, you're a hero. You're not a bad guy who's going to invade things and do this. Please think of what you're being told and who is telling you. But the fight is on. You end up having the fight go on. And it's pretty cool. You end up having the Avengers go off. You end up getting the Ghost Quinjet by being helmed by Ghost Rider. There's wow moments to be had. These are the fun moments. Now, the big plan seems to be let's go attack the Armada. But in the meantime, let's end up throwing Molnir 
out at the ship, at the Cree Scroll ship where you end up having the Hulkling, and then just give the whole armada a virus, a virus that ends up Tony Stark using Molnir to put this virus into the computer system. And again, the fight is exciting enough. You have a lot of things going on. You end up having Captain Glory show up while, the, you know, Ghost Rider's giving everybody the penance stare. And then you have Captain Glory has to announce, that doesn't work with me because I'm Captain Glory. It's another one of those announcement moments. But the whole big deal is to get this armada, shut them down. And Tony succeeds. Tony ends up doing that. Tony does with the virus, shuts down the whole armada. And it's funny because you're reading this like, okay, well, that didn't last too long. I guess this isn't 30 plus issues now. They whittled it down to one. The problem is this was all a dupe. The real villain is the Kotadi and Koye, and he is now going to, in you know, start the flowering, start this whole deal where the Kotadi they have had enough. They dupe the Avengers, and it's funny too because throughout all this, you ended up having them keep saying, "Hey, Hulkling, you sure you're not being duped? Hey, buddy, you sure?" And they were being duped. They were being duped by. Koye, who now ends up saying, we're the Avengers now. They're going to avenge all of that nonsense that ended up happening to them from both the Kree and the Scroll. And he pretty much goes to town. And anywhere that there's any vegetation, you know, they even say dirt on somebody's boot, things like that. Anything can be used as a weapon by the Celestial Messiah. And so now the Katati are taking it to everyone. And poor Ben looks like, you know, it it looks like he is me after eating a salad. I don't like salad, so I spit it up. Get it? But it's going into him now. That's the bad part. But, yeah, everybody's in trouble. They were in trouble. They were duped. Tony is apologizing to everyone. And then you see that the Empire is actually the Katati. And they're going to go. And now you're going to invade Earth. So by the end. I'm excited by the twist. I'm excited by the twist in a way that, yes, I want to, okay, let's see what's going to go on from here. But as a first issue, I wasn't that excited until then. And I kind of ended up getting bored by this pretty much throughout. And just at the end, I will go on and I will read Empire number two, but it has not convinced me to read any of the tie-ins yet. I don't think that that's anything that I will be excited for. But, you know, the second issue comes out, maybe I'm fired up with that. But overall, I'm going to go up from my score. I actually, as I was reading this and talking about it here, I ended up liking it a little more and, and getting a little more excited by the end. But even so, I'm going to go 6 5 overall with a. You know, little asterisks that that can improve easily if the next issue gets me excited. But most of this I thought was bogged down. And and again, is it the nature of the beast of an event and a first issue, a first issue with a couple tie ins that went into it where you do have to recap the recap? actually takes and i mean just the setup recap takes about 10 to 12 pages before you actually get into something new and even that meandered a bit it was very heavy narration until the end where we see we were all duped this is a kotati story no i don't know how many kotati fans are out there but it makes sense overall with how they've been treated and things like that uh but yeah there you go that is the end of the issue i hope that you like this review it's something of a big book so i'd like to hear if you're more interested than i am or less interested i looked at the overall scores on the comic book roundup and usually this sort of thing would you know get a bunch of tens it would get people hey i'm gonna i'm in really not that big a score that when i last looked before i recorded this the aggregate score of all the sites is a seven one and in this day and age uh which i'm telling you 10 out of 10s they're being given out like candy 7.1 7.1 is not great for the start of a huge event. I'm saying huge, not in scope of the story. I'm talking huge in the amount of books that are being thrown at fans. So let me know what you think. And I hope that you like this. If you do like it below, 
also subscribe to the channel check out all the links to weird science stuff websites podcasts dc and marvel and i will bid you adieu